Hi, and thanks for tuning in. Today, we're going to introduce ourselves to the wonderful world of microbiology by meeting the things that we refer to as microbes, learning about what they look like, and what things are considered to be alive in the world of microbiology, and which things are not considered to be alive in the world of microbiology. So stay tuned. Hi, and thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about uh, introducing ourselves to the world of microbiology. What are the microbes? What are these things that we're going to be studying in microbiology? And as you can guess, the overwhelming majority of these things are going to be small, like very small, as in so small they cannot be seen with the naked eye and we need to study them with a microscope. So what are these types of things that we're talking about? Well, one of the groups of organisms that we will talk about in microbiology are the bacteria. The domain bacteria is one of the three biological domains of life. They are one of the groups that is labeled as prokaryotes. That means they're made up of prokaryotic cells, which are the small, simpler cells that lack a nucleus in most membrane-bound organelles. And bacteria are hugely important for us. Now, most bacteria are friendly. They're helpful. They're involved in controlling geological cycles. They help our crops grow and they keep other cells alive. In fact, they help to keep you alive. And we'll learn that there's a, a huge, we'll learn that there's a, you have a huge microbiome that consists of thousands of different species of bacteria that are not only not harmful to you, but beneficial to you. They help keep you alive. They help you digest your food and they keep other uh, pathogenic bacteria from living in and on your body. But there are some bacteria out there that are harmful to us. Things like Mycobacterium tuberculosis, which causes tuberculosis. Things like Streptococcus pyogenes, which causes a whole slew of diseases from uh, bacterial pharyngitis, strep throat, to endocarditis and sepsis. We have things like uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, which can live on our skin and normally doesn't cause a problem, but if it happens to get into an open wound, can cause you to go septic, can actually kill you. Things like Streptococcus pneumoniae, which about a third of us actually carry around in our body and normally isn't harmful, but if it gets pushed into the wrong places, can, like your lungs, to cause pneumonia and get into your middle ear and cause ear infections or get into your sinus cavities and cause a sinus infection. Another group of, of microbes that are also prokaryotic and represent an entirely separate domain of life are the archaea. They are the second out of three domains of life, and they are the other branch of prokaryotic life. Now, archaea are exclusively friendly. We know of no known pathogenic archaea, at least in the context of humans. Archaea are kind of like the bacteria's strange cousins. They live in things like the acid runoff from defunct mines. They live in thermal vents at the bottom of the ocean or deep inside the Earth's crust. Heck, they can even live in things like nuclear reactors and places like that. In other words, archaea live in places where most other forms of life are completely incapable of living. For that reason, archaea are actually one of my favorite groups of microbes because they prove that life will persist wherever possible. These things are super adaptable and they do lots of cool things. What they don't do is harm humans. So they're sort of like the friendly prokaryotes. Now, there are other non-prokaryotic microbes that are also relevant to microbiology. The major group of these are the protists. So protists can loosely be broken down into two unofficial groups. Um, you've, got your, you've got your protozoa, which are sort of like the animal-like parasites, or animal-like, I should say parasites, animal-like protists, okay? Uh, they are things like euglenas and things like paramecium. But there are also pathogenic versions of protozoa. These are things like the trypanosomes uh, that can cause things like African sleeping sickness. Um, oh, and um, Chagas disease. You've got things like Plasmodium falciparum, which causes malaria. Um, you have uh, Babesia microti, which causes babesiosis and diseases like that. You have things like the brain-eating amoeba, Nagleria fowleri, uh, which causes a fatal brain infection if you get it into your nasal cavities from fresh water sources. But there are also friendly protozoa, or protists, I should say, and these are the algae. So algae is also a subgroup of the protists. Algae really don't have any major impact, at least in terms of their ability to infect humans. Algae are photosynthetic. You've got your red algae and your green algae, which are closely related to plants, brown algae, golden algae. Uh, and these are, mo these are photosynthetic 
uh, single celled um, uh, eukaryotes that make their make their life by by using the sun uh, as a source of energy and as such they have no ability to re really infect you or harm you there are some that do possess that that do produce toxins so if you ever heard of a red tide for example um, there was a big one off the coast of Florida in the United States a few years ago that killed lots of marine species and it made it dangerous to go swimming and so on and so forth. That is the result of toxins that are produced uh, by certain species of, of algae. But that being said, in terms of their ability to impact humans is relatively minor compared to some of the protozoans, uh, which cause some severe life-threatening and often fatal uh, infections. Another group, as we kind of get a little bit bigger, of eukaryotes that can harm us are the fungi. So I know we tend to think of fungi in their macroscopic versions, things like shelf fungi and mushrooms and things like that. But it may surprise you to know that the overwhelming majority of fungi are actually unicellular. And there are some that can cause massive problems to us, things like aspergillus. So aspergillus is that black mold that's often found in damp conditions or damp places in your house. This can actually uh, cause a couple of different problems. First off, it's highly allergenic. Most people are allergic in some way to black mold. It can cause a host of respiratory syndromes. The other problem is sometimes these black mold, this black mold can get, the spores can get into your lungs and it can actually um, lead to the growth of like these fungal balls that grow and can take over your body. And it's really dangerous and potentially fatal. And fungal infections are incredibly challenging to get rid of. Because fungi are so similar to you in terms of their cell structure, it's often very hard to use drugs that will, that will destroy the fungus without harming the human host that don't have massive side effects. So we'll talk about that in another video. The last group, and perhaps the biggest group of things that we talk about when we talk about microbes, at least in terms of the living world, are helminths. And helminths are kind of our uh, fancy microbiological word for worms. So we're talking about things like tapeworms. We're talking about things like um, nematodes, like ascaris. And we're talking about things like flukes uh, like, uh, that, that can infect your liver and things like that. Okay, So these are actually microscopic or macroscopic in the sense that you can see them. However, uh, we do lump them into the world of microbiology because in large part, when we talk about microbiology, we're studying things in the context of the ability of these microbes to cause disease. And while they are macroscopic in the sense that you can see them with their eye, um, a lot of how they're transmitted in the form of their eggs or their larvae, those are microbes. Um, and they can, have a, they can have a profound impact on human health and disease. Okay. The last group that we didn't talk about yet are the viruses. And the reason why I saved them for last is this. Viruses are neither prokaryotic nor eukaryotic. In fact, they don't represent a branch of life at all. Viruses are considered to be non-living, obligate intracellular parasites. Okay, These viruses do not meet what we would call the seven properties of life. And I have a video on this, and you can go to this link if you want to take a look at it. There are seven properties of life, and the only one that, that, that viruses actually demonstrate is order. They are highly ordered. Uh, in fact, they can be quite beautiful when examined under electron microscopy uh, or recreated that way, as you can see in some of these pictures. That being said, they're not alive. They can't reproduce on their own. They need a host cell. So why are we studying them in a biology classroom where we nominally study life? The answer is this. Every single species on the planet Earth, from the smallest bacterium to the oddest archaea to the largest mammal, is infected or can be infected by some type of virus. And in that very real sense, the entire pantheon of life, the evolution of life, and the ability of life to continue to persist and survive on Earth depends on their ability and their interaction to survive with these viruses. So even though viruses aren't considered to be alive, their massive impact on, on life as a whole and their ability in particular to infect and kill human beings is a reason enough for us to study them in the world of microbiology. So thanks for tuning in today. Uh, I hope you guys got a gist of, of what we look at in the world of microbiology, what the different types of microbes are, where they sort of fall uh, in, the, in the pantheon of life into prokaryotic domains and eukaryotic domain and so on and so forth. We also talked a little bit about viruses and how they're not really considered to be alive, but their massive impact on all living things uh, is, is so important that we can't neglect them in the study of microscopic organisms, even though they themselves are not considered to be, to be organisms. Hope you guys learned a lot today. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope to see you guys next time.